Hello, welcome back to Car Reviews with Saturn Fodder. I'm your host, Saturn Fodder. And uh, today's episode is about Nissan. We're just getting right into it. Today is about Nissan. Nissan. Let me, that's from last week. Don't look at that. Nissan. Okay. Happy holidays. December 14th. Today this is coming out. This is also the same day that I'm taking my CDL test. To get my CDL license. So that's fun. Uh, it's also the same day that I'm taking my wagon. To go get inspected and in alignment hopefully. If it works. I've been trying to do that for the past like week now. And it didn't work yesterday. And it didn't work the day before that. but Or the day before that. But hopefully. Uh, hopefully it'll be fine. Oh. Ah, excuse me. Um. So yeah, we are halfway through December, heading on to 2024. That's pretty crazy. 2024. This was definitely uh, a better year for me. Um, I mean, it, it started a little rough, but it has its rough moments. Every year does, but overall it was pretty good year I'd say uh, especially for for especially for I mean this podcast and my social media presence and my YouTube and everything it, it did pretty well today my Instagram really took off this year and I'm very very appreciative of that because I don't think I'd even have this podcast if I didn't have the amount of supporters that I had on Instagram so I really appreciate everybody who's listening to this from Instagram <laughs> And even if you're not, I still appreciate you, but that was specifically for the Instagram listeners. So yeah, I'm very appreciative you're here. Oh. Ah, excuse me again. I don't know why. Just knowing that I'm going to be talking for the next hour. My brain's like already making myself out of breath for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, anyway... So, if you don't follow me on Instagram, speaking of, yesterday I made a new post about my wagon that I now am driving on the road finally. I bought it like a while. It's been a while. I bought it a while ago, and I finally have it on the road. I'm finally driving it after like months. So, that's pretty exciting. It's uh, In case you don't know, it's a right-hand drive Saturn wagon. They only made 450. This is a 2000 Saturn SWP. The P stands for Postal. So it's Saturn Wagon Postal. They were right-hand drive uh, from factory. I'm saying that in case you haven't listened to my previous episodes on Saturns, uh, this is a quick little rundown in case you're curious. But uh, yeah, if you want to see a picture of it, go ahead to my Instagram. It's Saturn Spotter, of course. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that a lot. But it's really fun to drive. I know for the place I work, you have to like scan a key card into the parking lot. So I have to pull up and then back in and get my card scanned and then back into the parking lot, which is kind of funny because, you know, it's a right hand drive car. I can't just drive through like normal. So it's fun, though. It'll uh, give me some more practice on backup driving. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be I think it'll be pretty fun. It's going to be a big project, but I'm excited for how it's going to turn out when it's all said and done. It's going to be my daily driver for now because it has almost 400,000 miles on it as of this moment. Um, So it's it's definitely going to... It's it's rough. It's rough, to say the least. It's rough. But anyway, if you want to hear more about that... Oh my goodness! Ah, Why do I keep yawning? Okay... I'll get over it. I'm just getting used to the fact that I have to talk for an hour, which I don't normally do for a solid hour straight, but I mean, hey, what are you going to do, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm glad you guys are here. Hope you're having a good holiday. Happy holidays. Hope you're having a good day, good week. Hope you have fun things planned for this weekend. I know I have a car show I'm going to uh, with my car club. Shout out to them if any of you guys are listening. And... Uh, Yeah, this episode is about Nissan, the Nissan Motor Corporation, 
which honestly surprise took me this long to do an episode on it i thought i would have done one sooner i just kind of forgot and i wanted to kind of do a wide variety of stuff and i didn't want to put all the similar things too close together i figured it'd be more fun more interesting if they're kind of spaced out with different different themes and whatnot uh kind of evenly but i think this should be a lot of fun there's a lot of information in this episode so let's see if we're gonna get through it all probably not because i did put a lot of information in here but we will see how it goes so nissan motor company commonly known as nissan is a japanese multinational automobile manufacturer headquartered in yokohama kanagawa prefecture japan the company sells its vehicles under the nissan and infinity brands and formerly the datsun brand rip with in-house performance tuning products under the nismo and autech brands the company traces back to the beginnings of the 20th century with the nissan zaibatsu now called nissan group as one of japan's most powerful business groupings which is pretty crazy since 1999, Nissan has been a part of the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance, a partnership. Well, Mitsubishi joined in uh, 2016, but a partnership between Nissan and Mitsubishi of Japan with Renault of France. As of November 2023, Renault holds about a 15% voting stake in Nissan, while Nissan holds the same stake in Renault. Since October 2016, Nissan holds a 34% controlling stake in Mitsubishi Motors. In 2017, Nissan was the sixth largest automaker in the world after Toyota, Volkswagen, Hyundai, General Motors, and Ford. Of course, of course, it'd be Ford. In 2014, Nissan was the largest car manufacturer in North America with the average revenue of $78 billion in 2022. Um, Nissan, okay, wait, there's, there's a period there. Nissan was the ninth largest automobile maker in America in 2014, period. With a revenue of $78 billion in 2022, Nissan was the ninth largest automobile maker in the world, as well as being the leading Japanese brand in China, Russia, and Mexico. There we go. Maybe that was a little bit easier to understand. As of April 2018, Nissan was the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, with global sales of more than 320,000 all-electric vehicles. The top-selling vehicle of the car maker's fully electric lineup is the Nissan Leaf. I guess that makes sense. And the number two top selling electric car globally, just behind the Tesla Model 3. I mean, yeah, I know a guy with a really cool looking Tesla Model 3. It's a three, I think. Eli, Eli, it's a, it's a three, right? It's not like an S. I know it's not an S. And I don't think it's a Y. I'm pretty sure it's a three. Uh, I was a buddy of mine. He drives a Tesla. I'm pretty sure it's a Model 3 on bags. I want to get a picture of it if I can. I don't want to take too long doing this, but I'm, I, I kind of want to prove a point now. Uh, I can't remember what his Instagram tag is. I found it. I do remember it. I'm going to throw up a picture of it for you guys because it's really good, really cool looking Tesla. So let's, uh, let's see, let's see. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to screenshot this. It's worth it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. See, if I had like a second person here with me, I'd have them like crop the screenshot and do all this. Oh, do all this while, um, while I was still talking, but of course it doesn't exactly work that way. So instead, you have to sit through this with me, which hey, you know, it's, it's all fun and games, more time to hang out, not that bad. I just really wanna show you guys what I'm talking about, but also so that I can confirm whether or not it's a Model 3, which I'm fairly positive that it is. Ah. Uh, That might be a Model Y, honestly. Can I can I please just drag it over? Come on, come on. Okay, I put it over the wrong screen, but either way, that's uh, that's Ali's own garage on Instagram. This is his 
on airbags Tesla, which I'm fairly certain that's a model. Yeah, it's a model three. Cause the Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a model three. If I'm wrong, Eli, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I'm fairly positive that's a model three. Look at that fitment though. That looks so good. I'm not really a Tesla guy, but I, I do really like this one. It's really clean. And he has like a Tony Stark thing in the front. It's really cool. It's a really, really nice. He did a really good job with it. It looks really good. But anyway, uh, back to uh, Nissan here. After all that time I just spent doing that. But hey, you know what? You guys can skip ahead. If that was boring or if you feel like something like that's going to happen, nothing's stopping you from like pressing that 10 second skip button and skipping the wait. If that's what you feel like doing. If you don't, I appreciate you not skipping. But, you know. It is what it is. Okay, so. La, 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 la. Matsujiro Hashimoto founded the Kwashinsha Motor Car Works, a good company automobile manufacturer, on July 1st, 1911, in Azabu Hiro district of Tokyo. In 1914, the company produced its first car called the DAT, or the D A T. I want to throw up this picture right here for you so you can see this is the Datsun Model 11 right there we're gonna throw that up it was renamed to Hashinsha Motor Car Company in 1918 and again to Dat Didosha and Company in 1925, DOT Motors, or DAT Motors, built trucks in addition to the DAT and Datsun passenger cars. The vast majority of its output were trucks due to an almost non-existent consumer market for passenger cars at the time, and disaster recovery efforts as a result of the 1923 Great Kanto Earthquake beginning in 1918. The first DAT trucks were produced for military market. At the same time, Jitsuyo Didosha Co., company produced small trucks using parts and materials imported from the u.s commercial operations were placed on hold during japan's participation in world war one and the company contributed to the war effort in 1926 the tokyo-based dat motors merged with the osaka-based jitsuyo didosha company aka jitsuyo or jitsudo didosha saizo to become a dat dosha saizo size please that's spelled a little different C's company uh, in Osaka until 1932. From 1923 to 1925, the company produced light cars and trucks under the name of Lila. In 1929, DAT Automotive Manufacturing Incorporated merged with a separated part of the manufacturing business, IHI Corporation, to become Automobile Industries Company Limited. In 1931, DAT came out with a new smaller car called the Datsun Type 11, which is what you see now. The first Datsun, meaning son of DAT, later in 19, or dot son or dat dot dot yeah. Later in 1933, after Nissan Group took control of DAT Motors, the last syllable of Datsun was changed to son because son also means loss in Japanese, hence the name dot son. So it went from S O N, as in son of DAT, to S U N. Uh, in 1933, the company name was Nipponized to Didosa Seas Co. and was moved to Yokohama. In 1928, Yoshi Yoshisuke Akawa founded the holding company Nihon Sangyo. The name Nissan origination originated during the 1930s as an abbreviation used in the Tokyo Stock Exchange for NI and Neon and SAN in Sangyo. This company was Nissan Zaibatsu, which included Tobata Casting and Hitachi. At this time, Nissan controlled foundries and auto parts businesses, but Aikawa did not enter automobile and manufacturing until 1933. So Hitachi is a Japanese multinational conglomerate founded in 1910 and headquartered in Chiyoda, Tokyo. Uh, so it's and included that as well and with Nissan Zaibatsu. Uh, Hitachi was uh, specialized, specialized in a diverse range of products, including digital systems, power, and renewable energy solutions, also including healthcare and railway systems. So pretty big uh, variety of things they did. 
The Zaibatsu eventually grew to include 74 firms and became the fourth largest in Japan during World War II. In 1931, D.A.T. Jidosha Saiz... Uh, see, it's spelled differently here than it was before. Saizo became affiliated with Tobata Casting and was merged into Tobata Casting in 1933. As Tobata was a Nissan company, this was the beginning of Nissan's automobile manufacturing. In 1934, Aikawa separated the expanded automobile parts division of Tobata Casting and incorporated it as a new subsidiary, which he named Nissan Motor Company. The shareholders of the new company, however, were not enthusiastic about the prospects of the automobile in Japan. Automobile, sorry, in Japan. So Aikawa bought out all of the Tabata Casting shareholders in June 1934. At this time, Nissan Motor effectively became owned by Nyon Changnyo and Hitachi. In 1935, the construction of its Yokohama plant was completed. 44 Datsuns were shipped to Asia, Central, and South America. In 1935, the first car manufactured by an integrated assembly system rolled off the line at the Yokohama plant. Nissan built trucks, airplanes, and engines for the Imperial Japanese Army. In November of 1937, Nissan moved to its headquarters in Xinjiang to capitalize the capital of Manchukuo in December. The company changed its name to Manchuria Heavy Industries Developing Company. So Nissan didn't just start as Nissan, that was a lot. It, it, it was moving all over the place. In 1940, the first knockdown kits were shipped to Doha Jidosa Kogyo, one of MHID's companies for assembly. In 1944, the head office was moved to Nihonbashi, Tokyo, and the company named was changed to Nissan Heavy Industries, which the company kept through 1949. That's nine years. DAT or DOT, I'm just going to call it DOT because it's DOT sin, it's not DAT sin. So. DOT had inherited Kubota's chief designer, American engineer William R. Gorham. This, along with Aikawa's 1908 visit to Detroit, was to greatly affect Nissan's future. Although it had always been Aikawa's intention to use cutting edge auto making technology from America, it was Gorham that designed out the plan. Most of the machinery and processes originally came from the US. When Nissan started to assemble larger vehicles under the Nissan brand in 1937, much of the design plants and plans and plants facilities were used and supplied by the Graham Page Company. Nissan also had a Graham license under which passenger cars, buses, and trucks were made. In his 1986 book, The Reckoning, David Halbertstam, or Halbertstam, pretty sure it's them, states, in terminology, and I quote, in terms of technology, Gorham was founder of the Nissan Motor Company, end quote. And that, quote, young Nissan engineers who had never met him spoke of him as a god and could describe in detail his years at the company and his many inventions, end quote. I had to make sure that was quoted. I'm going to throw up, wow, that sounded weird with the pot. I'm going to throw up a picture of the Graham-based Nissan Model 70 sedan. So, bye-bye Datsun Model 11. Hello, Graham Model 70 sedan. Look at that, huh? I mean, that's a really, you know, what you would imagine a car from the 1930s looks like. But, you know, it is what it is. So now we have the uh, relations with the Austin Motor Company. So from 1934, Datsun began to build Austin 7s under license. This operation became the greatest success of Austin's overseas licensing of its 7 and marketed the beginning of Datsun's international success. In 1952, Nissan entered into a legal agreement with Austin for Nissan to assemble 2,000 Austins from imported partially assembled sets and sell them in Japan under the Austin trademark. The agreement called for Nissan to make an all Austin parts locally within three years, a goal Nissan met. Nissan produced and marketed Austins for seven years. The agreement also gave Nissan the rights to use Austin patents, which Nissan used in developing its own engines for its dots and line of cars. In 1953, British built Austins were assembled and sold, but by 1955, the Austin A50 completely built by Nissan and featuring a new 1489cc engine was on the market in Japan. Nissan produced 20,900 Austins from 1953 to 1959. So we're going to throw a picture here of the Austin 7 Ruby. 
go ahead and we'll bam that up for you. There it is, the Austin 7 Ruby. Which I also want to throw a picture. I need to I need to say put or like add. I need to stop saying throw up. I also want to show you a picture of the Austin A60, which is right here. And this is the uh, the one that Nissan made themselves. Completely built by Nissan and with a new engine. That's what this one is. So this is the Nissan built Austin right there. Nissan leveraged the Austin patents to further develop its own modern engine designs beyond what Austin's A and B family designs offered. The apex of the Austin-derived engines was the new design, A-series engine, in 1996. In 1967, Nissan introduced its new, highly advanced four-cylinder overhead cam Nissan L engine, which, while similar to Mercedes-Benz single-cam designs, was a totally new engine designed by Nissan. This engine powered the new Datsun 510, which is a wonderful car, by the way, which gained Nissan respect in the worldwide sedan market. Then, in 1969, Nissan introduced the Datsun 240Z, of course, everybody knows the 240Z, sports car, which had used a six-cylinder variation of the L-Series engine, developed under Nissan machinery in 1964. A former remnant of another audio auto manufacturer, Kurogane, the 240Z was an immediate sensation and lifted Nissan to world-class status in the automobile market. All right, we're going to throw up the Datsun 510. I need to stop saying that. I'm going to put up a picture of the Datsun 510. Uh, this car is in basically every Forza game after like the second one, I think. Uh, it's awesome. The 510 is such a cool, I mean, like it looks, you know, pretty square or rectangular, but it's a really, really cool car. I really like the 510. And then we are also going to put a picture of the 240Z, which I think everybody, everybody knows the 240Z. This is this is a classic, iconic Nissan. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Datsun, China, they're both the same thing. That's a Ferrari, uh, right here. I mean, this is, look at this, this one's with hubcaps too. Not even hubcaps, it's just a Steely's base model right here. Yeah, this is a very iconic car. I feel like pretty much everybody knows all about this car. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of people who are into cars, which I feel like is at least 90% of my listeners, know about the Datsun 240. Cool car, they look really cool in person as well. So now we have the 100 day strike of 1953. During the Korean War, Nissan was a major vehicle producer for the US Army. After the Korean War ended, significant levels of anti communist sediment existed in Japan. The union that organized Nissan's workforce was strong and malicious. Nissan was in financial difficulties, and when wage negotiations came, the company took a hard line. Workers were locked out and several hundred were fired. The Japanese government and the U.S. occupation forces arrested several union leaders. The union ran out of strike funds and was defeated. A new labor union was formed with Shoichi Ichiro, one of its leaders. Ichiro had studied at Harvard University on a U.S. government scholarship. He advanced an idea to trade wage cuts against saving 2,000 jobs. Ichiro's idea was made part of a new union contract that prioritized productivity between 1955 and 1933. Nissan expanded rapidly on the basis of technical advances supported and often suggested by the union. Ichiro became president of the Confederation of Japan Automobile, Automobile Workers Union and the most influential figure in the right wing of the Japanese labor movement. So then, in 1966, Nissan merged with the Prince Motor Company and uh, we're gonna show you here the 1966 Prince R380 race car because this thing looks very cool and I like it very much. Look at that, look at how cool that looks. That's gotta be one of the coolest looking cars you've ever seen. I like those wheels too, they're very different, but I like them. And I love the old tire letters, the vintage tire letters it looks so cool. I don't, is 1966 vintage? I'd say that's that's vintage by now, right? I mean, like, I don't want to be be mean to old older people here, but I feel like you could classify 1966 as vintage by now, right? I think, I mean, I know cars are considered vintage when they turn 30. I'm, I'm pretty sure, so 
I mean, hey, you know, who am I to judge, right? So, like I said, in 1966, Nissan merged with the Prince Motor Company, bringing more upmarket cars, including the Skyline <laughs> and the Gloria, into its selection. The Prince name was eventually abandoned, and successive Skylines and Glorias bore the Nissan name. Prince was used at the Japanese Nissan dealership, Nissan Prince Shop, until 1999, when Nissan Red Stage replaced it. Nissan Red Stage itself has been replaced as of 2007. The Skyline lives on as the G-Series of Infinity. So yeah, not exactly the Skyline you were thinking of, most likely. Um, but uh, let's get a picture of the Nissan, uh, the, yeah, yeah, the Nissan Gloria up for you. I really personally like these cars. I mean, it looks a lot. You can see the Infinity in it. I mean, you can, just by looking at that, if I blurred the Nissan badge right here, and I wasn't talking about it, and on the hubcaps, you'd probably assume that was an infinity, just based off the design. It looks, it looks a lot like a uh, an infinity, which I mean makes sense. Um, and also, here was the first Prince Skyline, so you can see the Skyline was not always the uh, you know R35, R34. This is what the first Nissan Skyline was. And you can see it says Prince right, right, right across the grill right there. I like the way this looks a lot. I also really like vintage cars. Like the design. I love the design and how when cars were made back then, there was so much thought and like, you know, emotion that went into the design of the car. Nowadays, it's like, what sells the most? But I really like the way this looks. So you may be surprised that the Nissan Skyline that you think of when you first think of Nissan Skyline didn't start at the R31 or R30 or anything like that. It's pretty crazy. A lot of people didn't know that's the first Skyline. If you didn't know that, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, to capitalize on the renewed investment during 1964 Summer Olympics, Nissan established the gallery on the second and third floors of the Sanai building located in Ginza, Tokyo, to attract visitors, Nissan started using beautiful female showroom attendants where Nissan held a competition to choose five candidates as the first class of Nissan Miss Fair Ladies, modeled after Datsun demonstrators from the 1930s who introduced cars. The Fair Lady name was used as a link to the popular Broadway play My Fair Lady of the era. Miss Fair Ladies became the markets, marketers of the Datsun Fair Lady 1500 which is also a beautiful car, which I will show for you right now. So you can see it. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful car. I bet you this thing is a joy to drive. Probably rides like a dream. Convertible, dude, small, convertible. Then Dawson Fairlady, 1600. Or 1500, my bad, my bad. But uh, yeah. In April 2008, 14 more Miss Fair Lady candidates were added for a total of 45 Nissan Miss Fair Lady pageants. Uh, and then in April 2012, seven more Miss Fair Lady candidates were added for a total of 48 because, you know, some they, you know, they had 48 then in 2012. Uh, and then in 2013, six more Miss Fair, Lady, Miss Fair Lady candidates were added to the Ginza showroom for a total of 27, 48 Ginza Nissan Miss Fair Lady pageant. Pretty crazy. In the 1950s, Nissan decided to expand into worldwide markets. Nissan management realized their Datsun small car line would fill an unmet need in markets such as Australia and the world's largest car market, the United States. They first showed the Datsun Bluebird at the 1958 Los Angeles Auto Show. Let me get a picture of that up for you so you can see it. The Datsun Bluebird. There you go. Datsun Bluebird. Look at that. Bam. Look at that Datsun Bluebird right there. If I can get it centered. There we go. It's about centered. It's going to get. The Datsun Bluebird sedan. Let's see. Let's see. At the 1958 Los Angeles Auto Show, the company formed a U.S. subsidiary Nissan Motor Corporation USA in Gardena, Gardena, California. In 1960, headed by Yutaka 
Yuta Ka Katayama. Nissan continued to improve its sedans with the latest technology advancements in chic Italianate styling in sporty cars such as the Datsun Fairlady Roadsters and the race winning 411 series, the Datsun 510 and the 240Z. Uh, let me get you a picture of the 240 series of the Bluebird. Uh, let's see, let's see, where's a good picture? Where's a good one? I want to make sure you get a good one. Let me go back. The 411 series is what I meant. Uh, actually, I think I already put a picture up of it. In the wake of the 1973 oil crisis, consumers worldwide, especially in the lucrative U.S. market, began turning to high-quality small economy cars. To meet the growing demand for its new Nissan Sunny, the company built new factories in Mexico, uh, making it Nissan's first North American assembly plant, which was uh, Nissan Mexicana, which was established in the early 1960s and commenced manufacturing in 1966 and in the New Mexico the, the Mexican facility. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, the United States, and South Africa. The chicken tax of 1964 placed a 25% tax on commercial vans imported to the United States. In response, Nissan, Toyota, and Honda began building plants in the U.S. in the early 1980s. Nissan's initial assembly plant, Smyrna Assembly Plant, which broke ground in 1980, at first built only trucks such as the 720 and the Hardbody, but has since expanded to produce several car and SUV lines, including the Ultima, Maxima, Rogue, Pathfinder, Infiniti QX60, and the Leaf EV vehicle. The addition of mass market automobiles was in response to the 1981 voluntary export restraints imposed by the U.S. government. An engine plant in Detroit, Tennessee, followed most recent, a second assembly plant was established in Canton, Mississippi. In 1970, Tio Car was created, which created a Greek assembly plant created in cooperation with Theoharakis. It was situated in Volos, Greece, and its geograph geographical location was perfect as the city had a major port. The plant started to produce in 1980, assembling dots and pickup trucks and continuing with the Nissan Cherry and Sunny automobiles. Until May of 1995, 170,000 vehicles were made mainly for Greece, which makes sense because, you know, it was in Greece. So it makes sense that they would build cars mainly for Greece. But, I mean, hey, you never know. Sometimes things are uh, a little weird and crazy and don't go how you think they would. Trust me, I've encountered that plenty of time. Plenty of time, especially when you're working on cars, that'll happen. Um, I want to show up a picture for you of the Nissan, of the Datsun 720. The Datsun pickup truck right here. Bada bing, bada boom. In Arlington, look at that. There it is. Pretty cool looking truck. If I ever needed a shop truck, I probably wouldn't mind something like that. As well as the hard body which also would be a very good uh, shop truck. Look at that. Nissan hard body is, I mean, honestly, for, for a truck, it's pretty strong, and it looks pretty cool, and it's a Datsun. I meant to say Datsun, not Nissan. But, uh, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty cool truck, if you ask me. I'd be down to drive something like that for a shop truck or for a parts truck or we need to go pick up parts i need a truck because of the bed i can throw it in there um by the early 1980s nissan had no had long been the best-selling japanese brand in europe in order to overcome export tariffs and delivery costs to its european customers nissan contemplated establishing a plant in europe nissan tried to convert the greek plant into one manufacturing cars for all european countries However, due to the issues with the Greek government, not only did that not happen, but the plant itself was closed. A joint venture with Italy's then state-owned Alfa Romeo was also entered in 1980, leading to Italian production of the Nissan Cherry and an Alfa-badged and motorized version, the Alfa Romeo Arna. After an extensive review, Nissan decided to go, to go it alone instead. I think that's supposed to say to go at it alone instead. 
or go in alone instead. The city of Sunderland in the northeast of England was chosen for its skilled workforce and its location near major ports. The plant was completed in 1986 as a subsidiary Nissan Motor Manufacturing UK. By 2007, it was producing 400,000 vehicles per year, landing at the title of most produced plant in Europe. So we're gonna show you here the Datsun Cherry, or the Nissan Cherry, as we heard. Once again, this thing's cool. I really like small cars, just because uh, they're just fun. They're fun to mess around with a tiny little car. You can like swing around. It takes up like no space. This is the Datsun Cherry, or later known as the Nissan Cherry. Look at those wheels. I really, that's such a cool wheel design. Those are easily like 12, 12 inch rims. I mean, you gotta put in perspective how small the car is. Like look at the floor tile. In comparison to the wheel, that wheel, that rim is about the size, like cut the edges off. It's pretty much the size of the diameter of a floor tile. And those are usually about a foot. Yeah. On average, they're about a foot. So those are really small wheels. And look at how tiny those tires are. Those gotta be like, those are like 165s. I say that those are tiny, but that's like the same size tire that I have on my cars. But either way, that's a that's a small car. And then we also mentioned, let me find it. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Oh yeah, the Alfa Romeo Arna. We'll show up a picture of that as well, so you can see it, because we did mention that. Well, bam, and you get to see the other side. So there's the. The alpha version and it's a three-door yeah honestly if you look at from right here back this looks like an a86 this looks like a hachiroku if you just look from the 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 hinge of the front door and back the way that this light peeks out and the bumper and just the angle this looks a lot like an a86 uh, at the right angle but uh yeah in 2001, Nissan established a manufacturing plant in Brazil. In 2005, Nissan added operations in India through its subsidiary Nissan Motor India. With its global alliance partner Renault, Nissan invested $990 million to set up a manufacturing plant in Chennai, catering to the Indian market as well as a base for exports of small cars to Europe. Nissan entered the Middle East market in 1957 when it sold its first car in Saudi Arabia. Nissan sold nearly 520,000 new vehicles in China in 2009 in a joint venture with Dongfeng Motor. To inc meet increased production targets, Dongfeng Nissan expanded its production, production, production base in Guangzhou, which would become Nissan's largest factory around the globe in terms of production capacity. Nissan also has moved and expanded its Nissan America Incorporated headquarters moving from Los Angeles to Franklin, Tennessee in the Nashville area. Uh, in 1999, facing severe financial difficulties, Nissan entered an alliance with Renault of France. In June 2001, Renault executive Carlos Gosen, or Gosen was named chief, chief executive officer of Nissan. In May 2005, Gosen was named president of Nissan's partner company Renault. He was appointed president and CEO of Renault on the 6th of May, 2009. Under CEO Gosen's Nissan revival plan, the company had rebounded in what many leading economists consider to be one of the most spectacular corporate turnarounds in history, catapulting Nissan to record, record profits and a dramatic rev revitalization of both its Nissan and Infiniti model lineups. Gosen has been recognized in Japan for the company's turnaround in the midst of the ailing Japanese economy. Gosen and the Nissan turnaround were featured in Japanese manga and popular culture. His achievements in revitalizing Nissan were noted by the Japanese government, which awarded him the Japan Medal with Blue Ribbon in 2004. He got a Medal of Honor. That's really, really cool. And that's definitely in Japan. That's like huge. That's a very important thing in Japan. Getting receiving something like that. Um, 
In February 2017, Gosen announced he would step down as CEO of Nissan on April 1st, 2017. Ha, April Fools! While remaining chairman of the company, he was replaced as CEO by his then deputy, Hiroto Saikawa. On the 19th of November, 2018, Gosen was fired as chairman following his arrest for the alleged underreporting of his income to Japanese financial authorities. Ooh, that's, nope, that, that was a bad idea, man. That's how you do it. After 108 days in detention, Gosen was released on bail, but after 29 days, he was again detained on new charges, which was April 4th of 2019. Man, this dude just, wow. He had been due to hold a news conference, but instead his lawyers released a video of him alleging this 2018 through 19 Nissan scandal uh, as evidence of value destruction and Nissan corporate mismanagement. In September 2019, Saikawa resigned as CEO following allegations of improper payments received by him. Yashirido, Yashuhiro Yamochi was appointed as acting CEO. In October 2019, the company announced that it had appointed Makoto Uchida as its next CEO. The appointment would be made effective by the 1st of January 2020 at the latest. On December 1st of 2019, Uchida became, became CEO. In the United States, Nissan had been increasing its reliance on sales to daily rental companies like Enterprise Rent-A-Car or Hertz. In 2016, Nissan's rental sales jumped 37%, and in 2017, Nissan became the only major automaker to boost rental sales when the Detroit, Detroit 3 cut back less profitable deliveries to daily rental companies, which traditionally are the biggest customers of domestic automakers. In late July 2019, Nissan announced it would lay off 12,500 employees over the next three years, citing a 95% year-on-year net income fall. Hiroto Saikawa, CEO at the time, confirmed the majority of those cuts would be plant workers. Ooh. That's definitely not something you want to hear. In May of 2020, Nissan announced that the company would cut production capacity by 20% due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In mid-2020, the company announced it would shut down factories in Indonesia and Spain and would exit the South Korean car market. Nissan announced that the Infiniti brand would be pulled out from South Korea as well alongside the Nissan brand by December due to worsening business environment amidst the pandemic and the 2019 boycott of Japanese products in South Korea. Nissan announced that service centers will be managed to provide after-sales service such as quality, vehicle quality assurance and parts management, management for eight years. In November of 2020, Nissan announced a $421 million total loss in the last quarter due to COVID-19 and the scandal concerning Gosen. According to spokesperson of Nissan of North America, the company had suffered from a strategy of volume at any cost, which has been attributed by analysts to Gosen. In January of 2023, Renault said it intended to transfer almost 30% of its controlling stake in Nissan to a French trust reducing its shares with voting rights to a minority 15% and in doing so, making Nissan shares in Renault to gain voting rights. The shareholding and voting ratio of both companies is set to be fixed in the future. The agreement also included Nissan investing in Ampere, which is a uh, Renault subsidiary for electric cars, and projects in various markets. In February of 2023, both companies approved the going ahead for the shareholding changes. Financial details and regulatory clearances for the transaction were set to be completed by first quarter of 2023 and it would be done by the fourth quarter. The company's also approved joint projects for Nissan, Nissan's Ampere Investments. The share transfer was completed in November of 2023. So that was very recent. That was uh, last month. So that's very, very, very recent. Now I also want to talk about Nissan's relationship with other car companies um, so you can kind of see how they connect with other car brands that you may enjoy that you may never have even known that they were connected in Australia between 1989 and 1992 Nissan Australia shared, shared models with Ford Australia under a government backed rationalization scheme known as the button plan with a version of the Nissan Pintara being sold as the Ford Cross Corsair and a version of the Ford Falcon as the Nissan Ute. That's pretty crazy. 
a variant of the Nissan Patrol was sold as the Ford Maverick during the 1988 through 94 model years. In North America, Nissan partnered with Ford from 1993 to 2002 to market the Ohio-built Mercury Villager and the Nissan Quest. The two minivans were virtually identical aside from cosmetic differences. In 2002, Nissan and Ford announced the discontinuation of the arrangement. I want to throw up a Mercury Villager up there for you so you can get an idea. Uh, here you go. Throw that on up there. Mercury Villager from Virginia. Look, nothing against Virginia, but they gave me a ticket for Underglow in the daytime. So Virginia is not my favorite place. I'm not going to lie. So actually, yeah, definitely something against Virginia. I can't say nothing against Virginia and then say that. We're also going to throw up the Nissan Quest. This is the... 2015 one so you know a little bit newer but i'm also not trying to take 20 minutes looking for a picture that way it's not boring but there you go i mean they all look pretty similar they're just slight model changes actually you know here's the first generation here's the first generation this one's actually better we'll throw up the first gen there you go you can see the difference the 1993 nissan quest this was picture this was photographed in ontario canada um so there's the Nissan Quest for you. In Europe, Nissan and Ford Europe partnered to produce the Nissan Toronto 2 and the badge engineered Ford Maverick, a midsize SUV produced at the Nissan Motor Iberica plant in Barcelona, Spain. The Maverick slash Toronto 2 was a popular vehicle sold throughout Europe and Australasia. It was also sold in Japan as a captive import with the Nissan model marketed as the Nissan Mistral. Here is the Nissan Toronto 2. We'll throw that up for you. This looks like a, um, oh man, I can't think of what it's called. Not a floor runner. Oh, I really can't think of it. Uh, maybe you'll see it the first time you think of it. It might pop in my head later. I just can't think. I can't think of what it reminds me of. It definitely reminds me of something. That is for sure. Uh, okay, so Nissan licensed the Volkswagen Santana. Production began in 1984 at Nissan's Zama Kanagawa plant and ended in May of 1990. So let's pull up a picture of that as well so you can see it. So Nissan and Volkswagen had a little collaboration going on. And here it is. It almost, it has like the length of a Jaguar. Like it's, it's Jaguar length. If those were kind of long sometimes. There we go. That just center it better. A little bit easier to see there. I gotta remember I gotta center them more often or else you're not gonna be able to actually see it. My bad. My bad. Um, from 1983 to 1987, Nissan cooperated with Alfa Romeo to build the Arno, which we saw earlier. The goal was for Alfa to compete in the family hatchback market segment and for Nissan to establish a foothold in the European market. After Alfa Romeo's takeover by Fiat, both car cooperation, car and cooperation were discontinued. In Europe, General Motors and Nissan cooperated on the Nissan Prima Star, a light commercial vehicle. The high roof version is built in the NMISAA plant in Barcelona, Spain, while the low roof version is built for the Vauxhall Motors or Opel's Luton plant in Bedfordshire, UK. Let me get you a picture of this thing. This actually looks... <laughs> this is, uh... A very interesting one here. There it is. This is the first generation right here. Nice little turbo diesel. It says Renault on it, but uh, yeah, that's, that's it. The Nissan Prima Star is what they called it. Honestly, this is the best generation looking at them. Looking at all of them. This is the best looking one. Uh, in 2013, GM announced its intentions to rebad the Nissan NV200 commercial van as the 2015 model year Chevy City Express to be introduced by the end of 2014. Holden GM Australian subsidiary sold versions of the Nissan Pulsar and the Holden Astra between 1984 and 1989. So let's, uh, let's throw up the Nissan NV200. I mean, there's really nothing too interesting about this. It's just a work van. I mean, you're, this is what you see like plumbers driving around in for their service, for their jobs. 
Nothing too crazy or too interesting about it. Um, we'll also show up the Nissan Pulsar. Uh, let's do this one. Here we go. Uh, where's the delete button? Found it. There you go. Some versions of them did say Dotson on it still. And also talked about the Holton Astra. And here it is. I'm gonna give you a little more time to look at that. And that's alright, that's good enough. That's all you get. Here's the Holton Astra. Which is funny because there's like a, a new Mini Cooper in the background over here. But uh, there it is. Nice little holding bag in the front right there. Um, and the LDV group sold a badge engineered light commercial vehicle version of the Nissan Serena as the LDV Cub from 1996 to 2001. The Nissan equivalent was marketed as a Nissan Vanette Cargo. Uh, this is definitely, it's a very round van, very round. I can't emphasize this enough. Look at how round that is. That thing's just like a bubble on wheels. Come on, line up. There we go. It's like a bubble on wheels. Look at how round this is. I mean, other than the back, but the front is very round. It also has a nice little face going on here. Um, but yeah. So that's pretty much it. I think that's the main stuff I want to add to this. There's a lot of information. I may, if you guys want, be able to do a second episode because there's a lot more information here. Um, with especially just the Japan side of Nissan, not even like the American side. And there's their marketing activities and their research and development. There's a lot of information here that we can definitely get into. But I think that's good for the first one. If you guys do want another one, make sure to put it in the Q&A down below. Let me know, kind of, just let me know, like, hey, I love us, a, 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 a part two. There you go. That's the word I'm thinking of. Part two of this with a little bit more information. I could do that. There's definitely enough there. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as I had fun making it, as I always do. And I hope the background music isn't too loud this time. I'm still trying to, you know, improve on that. But, you know, there's always something to work on. Always something that can be improved. And I'm still working on it and figuring it out. As this is my first time ever doing this. So, <laughs> you guys are here for the ride. But uh, I appreciate everybody who comes back. And even if it's your first time here, I appreciate that as well. Um, but, yeah. Um, uh, I don't really know what to say. I need to come up with like an outro. Be sure to check out my Instagram, Saturn Spotter. I appreciate that a lot, as well as my YouTube. Uh, normally, I would plug my podcast, but you're listening to it. Remember, you can listen to this on Spotify or Amazon Music, as well as YouTube. It does go on my YouTube channel, which is also Saturn Spotter, if you haven't checked it out. Uh, so you can watch it wherever. I'm still working on getting Apple Podcasts, or getting it up on Apple Podcasts, which I'll get there eventually. Um... Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for your never-ending support. I appreciate it so much. And I will see you guys next week. Happy holidays. Have a good weekend. Let me uh, get let me get the exit ready. That's not what I meant to do. Let me get the exit ready here. And bye-bye.